Welcome back to The Bible is Art, where we're in a series, A Christian Guide to Beauty and Design. And in this video, we're gonna explore empty space, or what designers call white space. Why is the universe mostly empty space? You'll often hear the statement from scientists or naturalists that the universe is mostly empty space, but then a value judgment slips in unnoticed. Our new picture of cosmology is that we live in a universe dominated by nothing. The scientist will start with a fact, the mostly empty space of the universe, but then interpret that fact. That interpretation, however, is smuggled in as a scientific fact and not argued for, not given any evidence. Imagine you could get rid of us and all the galaxies and everything we see in the universe would be largely the same. So we're insignificant on a scale that Copernicus never would have imagined. The argument often goes that the Earth is just a blue dot in this ocean of emptiness, and it's either explicitly said or implied that this is somehow related to the meaninglessness of it all. So the explanation is that empty space means that the thing in the middle of that empty space is meaningless. But when we look at how empty space is used and how it functions in the rest of life, it almost never implies meaninglessness. Empty space is actually so important in all disciplines that each domain has developed its own vocabulary for describing these empty spaces. In music, they're called rests. In architecture, they're called space and voids. In graphic design, they're called white space or negative space. Space like here or here. And they're so important that they're not just terms, but tools that are necessary to even practice these aesthetic arts. So how do they function? What do they do? And what is the meaning of empty space in these spheres? Well, there are at least four meanings of empty space. Emphasis or focus, anticipation, structure or relationship, and rest. One of the most fascinating things is that one of the main uses of empty space is literally the opposite of the common meaningless explanation. Let me show you. In museums, the main technique for drawing attention to the art is by putting a lot of white space between the pieces of art. A lot of white space. Notice, that means the opposite of meaninglessness. Nay, the thing in the sea of emptiness is so meaningful that we use an excessive amount of white space. The more empty space we use, the more important the thing is in the middle. In music, rests are used to design the relationships between the notes and phrases in the pieces. This is the empty space. It's also used to guide the hearer's attention to certain things and even misguide them for humor. Take this example. This aesthetic property is a secondary property because it is in the category of a higher order category of difference. Empty space, white space, or the difference or distance between two things is a fundamental Trinitarian attribute. Now, this is not listed in traditional lists of divine attributes. It is contained within the Trinitarian identity that there is a difference between the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. There is a proper distance or space. Just like in design, there's a proper distance. If objects are too far away, they bear no relation. But if they're too close, they will either be confused or identified as one thing. That is, these two are one. In a sense, the first great controversy in church history was how to understand the proper distance between the Father and the Son. Too close and there's confusion and identity, too far and they bear no relation. 
And the relation between the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, the distance between the divine persons, exhibits the same properties. For instance, exhibits similar properties. For instance, their distance emphasizes and focuses on the other divine persons. Notice how all of their identities are unable to be understood without the others. A father is not a father without a son, and a son a father. The spirit is the spirit of the father and the son, the breath of the other divine persons. Their distance also communicates relationship. That is, the father and the son have a distance between them in that the father is not the son, but also an identity and a closeness because you cannot be one without the other, and all three partake of the same divine nature. They can also be understood as containing anticipation. The nature of the identity of the Father anticipates, looks forward to the Son, and wherever you utter Son, you anticipate the Father. So God within himself contains space, he contains distance not as division or separation, but he is not monistic and undifferentiated. God is the prime analogate of space or distance. So when God created space, this wasn't a new concept. Indeed, it was the expression of his very being. God first had space within himself and then created things with distance not separation or division, but a proper distance that enables love. We could see this in Genesis 1. Creation is in large part designing the proper spaces between things, space between work and rest, space in time, day and night, between God and man, between spaces in creation, between plants and animals. And once again, creating space between things denotes the exact opposite of meaninglessness. The space between things is the prerequisite of its meaningfulness. Genesis 1-3 fast forwards creation from nothing to a dark watery mass, no distinctions, no space. So on day one, space is inserted between day and night. On day two, God creates space between sky and sea, or more properly, empty space is inserted between the water below and the water above. And of course, this is pronounced good. That is, it's better that these waters are divided and there's lots of empty space between these two things. And this space allows for attention to be focused on each of the things that were divided. Day three, the land is inserted into the waters, and the water that was the locus of attention in the previous day becomes empty space, white space on the next day. What happens on the land is where the main action of the story will occur. That's where God's images will live and speak and act. Day six will stipulate the distance, the proper space between God and man. That is, man is the image of God. Not too much space would reduce man to animal, not in God's image, and would picture God as too far, a deistic deity. Too close and man becomes God. Time is also organized by white space. The proper pattern is established as six days of work, one day of rest. But which is the white space? Well, there's a prima facie reason for considering the day of rest, the white space. I believe it's actually the opposite. Let me show you why. The Sabbath is not primarily about not doing things. That's simply the condition for the Sabbath. On the negative side, there's a death penalty for not observing the Sabbath later in the law. There's no punishment for not working during the six days. Positively, there's a double offering and convocation, that means a meeting, where sacrifice happens in the law. And wherever a burnt offering happens, there will always be a gift and peace offering. A peace offering is the one that you can eat. So the white space of works, all the work that you do, what gets produced from that work is brought in for a sacrificial feast. That is the focus and emphasis of time and space time and space is liturgically focused. 
Even history and revelation is an example of white space. 99.9% .9 of what happened during Bible times was not recorded. But what is written in scripture is selected and crafted to be the focus, the emphasis of divine revelation. Another form of space or distance is patience. God is patient. That is, if creation is the opening of ontological space for another, patience is opening temporal space for another. So far from empty space denoting meaninglessness, it is actually a rich, aesthetic, ethical, and ontological tool for structuring and directing meaningfulness. And that, my friends, is why empty space is art. Thank you so much for tuning in to The Bible is Art. I really do appreciate it. Please leave any comments you have below. See you in the next one.